on the Stochastic here with another I want to talk while driving vlog. Um, so today I think I'll go over this similar stuff that I went over the other time. Um, this kind of isn't like an article where I'm just like, oh, top five reasons to play whatever. And then I'm like, you know what? I changed my mind. Here's another article. There's top five reasons, but I changed one card. So you're on your own. Um, the big thing here is that like I, I wasn't content with the quality of it. Uh, one, because I was kind of rushed. Uh, today I have an additional about, I got about 50 minutes to, to, to record. So I, I think I can get through it. And the, the rain kind of was annoying. Also, I did forget some decks and stuff. So uh, going through it again makes perfect sense. So the first thing I kind of want to explain is why I do this. Um, so the reason I'm talking about this stuff, one is A, because I'm bored when I'm driving. Two, it kills, you know, I get to do something at the same time and give you guys content. But the, the main reason is because I kind of want to explain or just I'm trying to point out the more obvious like deck synergy type things or character lineups that have very decent cohesion and, you know, possible items for them. I'm not here giving you 30 card deck lists saying, this is tier one, you must run it. It's kind of like, this is a, this is tier one because these coincide very well. We may not have the cards available to run them properly yet, but they there's lots of good things coming from them. So if you take a chance to, you know, work on it, um, it could become, you know, the, the new, you know, God tier, rainbow, whatever you want to call it. And, um, in the current format, I wouldn't say that anything is super, super amazing, like rainbow nines from SOR status, like, cause rainbow nines from SOR was uh, a bit of an anomaly. So a good player could beat an opponent playing Pomaz because you can just control one of his dice per round and limit yourself from dying. It that, that same structure did not apply to Rainbow because what ended up happening is, is you often couldn't get Disrupt fast enough to stop them from doing all the crazy shenanigans. And they were just putting out buttloads of additional dice. So even if someone's play skill was very questionable, because they're outputting six seven maybe eight dice um in the first round alone they are just burying you with with attrition and damage like you didn't even have to get damage like sure if you rolled you know hot hot fire and you were like two on a night sister plus two bala plus two bala two on an f11 d you're like oh look take eight and then you roll out fn hit for three more kill a guy on tap you're like oh my god the game's over but that's not what normally happened. What would occur usually is like, all right, you know, I get maybe a resource on Bala and like a shield, but you obviously don't take the shield. You, you know, hold out, hit a plus two, you whiff. Um, Knight says it comes out with like a, a uh, you know, a disrupt. You pitch a card, you reroll, all right. So now hold out does like one damage and Bala's showing a focus and Knight Sisters at a one, but you leave it there. Resolve the one damage, all right, roll out FN. And it was just that you were getting so many dice, even though they were kind of crap dice at the beginning, that you were able to kind of plow ahead. You'd be able to get like a resource and a shield and still do like four damage. Whereas if you're running, you know, uh, Vader Guard, it, sure, your max damage is eight, but you could easily have just gotten one resource, uh, got a die manipulated, and dealt two damage. Like, that probably happened very frequently but with rainbow that doesn't occur because you were getting that that like full set of additional dice you hit the z6 it was like hitting vader's dice uh, 223 in the re-roll into it so like you were if your opponent played removal they're kind of setting themselves back behind and you were just getting out tons of damage and that's why rainbow was so much i guess easier to play for uh a more questionably skilled player because even if you didn't know the preset order you should be doing it was a bunch of oops I win and you just like throw all of your dice at your opponent and kill them with it I, I watched a lot on uh, some of the streams uh, when I had like downtime where people were just like here's my one weapon overwrite 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 all right now I'll activate FN and it was like why the hell did you just overwrite like four times night sister yourself to hell and then just roll out with this FN and hold out die. Like, you should have done this ages ago, and it's why you had to machine gun yourself instead of just pitching one of those weapons to fix the die. Um, or multiple dice. But anyways, 
So uh, I think there isn't anything new that continues that kind of onslaught of a bunch of dice. I think Rainbow Nines uh, is still very strong. Kylo FN came up as a new contender because Kylo FN, whilst it can't do the same oops I win, it's, it's more consistent and easier from a, a structural standpoint. Your entire deck could be entirely based off of Vibro Knife, meaning you don't have to worry about the shield meta that people are playing with. Um, you don't have to concern yourself with like four solutions, which are also annoying. And you have Kylo ability who kind of tries to shut down mono for the most part. So there, there's still a lot going there. You don't know which guy to attack. Um, there are some weaknesses when they play against burstier decks, and FN gets blown out uh, immediately round two because their deck does play still uh, moderately slower. It's not nearly as slow as Rainbow because all those like eight million extra actions were, were huge for like having your opponent be done with their round. And you can try to, at that point, kind of guess what they were doing, at least from a skilled perspective. So, um, back to EAW decks. There, there were some decks that I kind of left off, and I may even go over a deck a second time without realizing it. Often when I write these things, because I'm doing everything off of the cuff, um, meaning I don't have some script I'm reading from, I really don't have anything to go back and review. I don't really go and listen to myself talk a second time, so I don't really sit there and be like, oh my god, I, you know, I, I didn't, I talked about Cad Phasma five times, oops, um, it'll happen, sorry, uh, maybe you'll get more info, I don't know, but anyways, um, so, uh, I think I went over Maz Hera, uh, Rookie Pilot or Ezra, it doesn't matter to me which one you run, if people want to run second chance, that's fine, if they want more damage with the vehicles, that's fine, the... It, the reason I feel like it's at max like tier one and a half and probably more closer to tier two is the innate issue with it requiring outside assistance. And what I mean by that is that you're reliant on finding a vehicle for you to put in play. If if A, you don't find a vehicle out of those, those like 10 cards or possibly less because you don't mulligan effectively for it, because like let's say you hit five, okay? So you're sitting there, you're looking at like a strategic planning, which is the, the untapped support one. Reckless reentry, which is the, the roll out the die on a vehicle. Then like, I don't know, um, a Lothcat, a partnership, and they, uh, something else, Jane. We'll call it logistics. So now, if let's say you keep two of them. You're like, well, I want a logistics into ramp, or I, I want a strategic planning. So whatever vehicle I get, I can do twice. This way, I, I'll, I'll pull back Reckless because if I don't find Ewing, then like, or, or uh, Falcon, or like Ghost, or, then I, I don't lose my, my uh, card by accident. Because if you start with a Y-Wing, like you still want to be able to, to use it twice. And Strategic Planning will do that, but Reckless Reentry won't. So uh, you keep the Strategic, and then you're like, all right, well, I want this Lothcat for stopping myself from dying. So now you've kept two. You mulligan three. Um, you hear a beep. That's my stupid snapshot discount. Um, so you mull for three. Now, you might have 12 to maybe 14 supports um, or like vehicle supports in the deck. Or you could be running a little bit lower at like 10. In, in, in the case of 10, um, even though we kept two, it's, it's, it's a slightly higher than a one and three shot. So, realistically, if you're looking at, we'll make, oh, I'll use 33% just because I already know the math off the top of my head. If you have a 33% shot to hit one, and then you whiff, um, or in the three shots, you, you essentially have 50, you have about a 70% chance to hit it, meaning 7 out of 10 games, you're fine, and 3 out of 10, you whiffed, and now you have a new problem. So, in the scenarios where you whiff, if you look at your actual die sides, we, each of Maz dice only has a one ranged and it's in one one slot. Harris have one range in one slot, and then a rookie pilot has plus two and two, and then Ezra has one and a plus two. The damage there, even if you hit it across all five dice, with max, is six damage. That is not a whole lot, and the odds of doing that are, you're pretty much going for Yahtzee. Like, it's just not happening. Um, so, what what occurs there is that your your damage output is is very lacking so then you're you're kind of set behind you're trying to like 
you know, set yourself up to, to, to go into the next round and try to recover. But that's going to happen once every few games. And in the best of one, I don't know if you can really live with that. So um, that's not the, 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 the only downfall. I'm just explaining just one of the, the, the several. Now, the other thing is, is, so let's say you start with that U-Wing, all right? You're playing against any of the two character Big Bruiser decks. Uh, it could be Anakin Phasma, Kylo FN, Kylo Phasma, like uh, Cad Phasma. Uh, there's a lot of Phasmas in there, right? Yeah, Phasmas and Kylos and FNs. Hmm. Wonder why. Anyways, um, you could be playing against Sabine Ezra. Uh, anything that hits relatively hard and fast, which is primarily villain-based, because they have a bunch of crazy characters that do that, and Hero gets the shaft a lot. Um, so, let's say you U-Wing. If you go to deal damage on them, you're only doing 4 damage with the die on the special, It's because it's 2 and 2, or you'll get 3 damage. The other options are 2 resources which further your plan, or 2 focus to flip your other dice. And do you have, like, Y-Wings and stuff, flipping other dice doesn't even matter. So... Let's say you 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 kind of go a little nutty. You get to you your Ewing twice. You've only dealt you okay in the spectrum. You've only dealt six damage to one guy or eight to two. Now the thing here is is that off of Hera's Ewing, you didn't get to keep it in play. So now you're like, all right, well, do I have like recycles to recycle it to play something else? It's a lot of like combo oriented type things based on your hand and finding specific cards and being able to use them multiple times. You have to really go nutty to do stuff. Um, and even then it doesn't put you way ahead. Like just Anakin's dice and just Phasma's dice should probably output like six damage. That's not including any holocron shenanigans when stuff goes great. That's not in like, that's with you almost removing a die because Anakin has two, three, three for 50% for of his die, and then Phasma has the two in the special for 33%. If we include just the one or the fact that you can claim, the math changes. But one of the big things here is that Maz only has eight health. So if they focus down Maz, it's very possible for them to actually kill her in the first round. It's not super likely, but they could kill her at the start of the second. And one of the big things with Maserati is, is that you have to Hera first, and then you need to Maz. Uh, or you need to go, like, Vehicle and then Maz to, to, to do it. So you need about two actions. So, one, they're already a faster deck because you're playing support-based, and it takes you much longer to, to do stuff and resolve. So they should have Battlefield. They should be capable of rolling out and actually killing her prior to you getting off some second explosive effect. But, you know... Let, let, Let's say you fight this. Hey, but honestly, sarcastic, I can put a bunch of shields. Some of those decks don't care about shields. Like, the Vibro Knives matter, the difference of... So, like, let's say you U-wing your own board. You haven't dealt damage to them. So, like, unless you've gotten to stick down U-wing and keep it, um, maybe you did a quad into a U-wing, like, you're doing cute stuff, but because your cards are so expensive in comparison, it's... You really are starting behind. It's very possible to, to make a version that is great i just think right now even the vehicles that that do a lot are few and far between like we just talked about using u-wing multiple times and it's still and that probably being their nuttiest play not being super amazing it's in their preferred like lineup of hits let's say we change that to like a y-wing y-wing special will do very similar to a u-wing it'll do four damage um versus two character decks it's probably going to do four damage because they're using their resources for stuff that they actually need so that's fine but the, now the damage on y-wing is a lot lower because you're you have a two range double specials and i want to say it's a disrupt or a two disrupt and then two blanks you can't reckless that because 33 percent chance you kill the y-wing you could technically do it you just probably won't strategic planning is fine with it but it, it it goes back to like hitting all your stuff and doing stuff very specific um, and like this is assuming your opponent, your you know if your opponent's blue doesn't randomly deflect your three and make you cry because that's a five point swing. Stop myself from taking three and you take two, and that's why deflect can do like very nutty stuff right now because you have the cad phasmas, 
running around who have a three for a resource. If they couldn't resolve it or saved it or like X eight it, like it, some bad stuff can happen. Um, but the, the overall whole is that like if you start with a more mediocre hand, you're like say you get black one or ghost a couple times, you can't do a whole lot. And I have an itchy nose. I'm sorry. Um, um, you can't do a whole lot, so you kind of start the game from behind because your character dice on their own don't do a ton. You're you're going in for cheap tricks, and then like if you sit there thinking, well, Paul Maz can do it. Paul Maz is very different. Paul threw thermal detonators as his key card. Like most people didn't care if he threw just a U wing and then hit for two. It wasn't some 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 giant beater. It was the fact that he could thermal for six and then hit you for like two or do th two throws and be like, alright, take a Falcon for four, then take Thermal for, for, for the six or nine. And he, it, it was all very, very fast. You could mitigate his die, but you didn't have to worry about something. So he could get uh, claim advantage. He has the ability for defensive positions and Duggins and uh, like the Throne Room Abuse. Hurricane Throne Room Abuse very well. It, 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 it doesn't work that way. So... Um, that's more or less like why I put Maz Harati in the back. Um, but it, it does do some explosive plays. It's just with this game, because you're playing best of ones, you really do need solid consistency. You don't want to have to be reliant on finding your Holocron to win the game. You want to be playing the game and then find Holocron and just go, oh look, I, I won because I specialed into a mind probe and, and just ruined your life. And, like, that's the big thing about most of the decks that I put in, like, Tier 1 or 1 1.5. It's that you start out in a very decent position because you have dice that do actual damage. The higher your damage you can actually do, the better you're off without upgrades or any outside interference. For FN, it's different because the you're, you're playing Attrition. And it, the fact is, is, like, once he hits one, he can just overwrite, 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 and get, like, a bunch of additional pluses. So even though it's small amounts of damage, they add up, and you have a boundless play that can just, you know, kill a 12 health character guy in the first round. Maz can't do that. Like, they, they I guess realistically, they could probably find something where they, like, Ewing special three times and, you know, resolve, like, rookie pilot damage... Um, uh, in a, like a Maz and get what? Let's see, you're playing. If you're playing two characters, that's, that's not a ton. But if you're playing against like Padawan, Padawan Cannon, that would you know that that would kill the two Padawans and leave the Cannon in rough shape. But like even that deck's not tier one ish. Um, so like most of the tier one things, quote unquote, are two character lineups and they have roughly ten to twenty out, ten to twelve health for the. Um, like between the character combination. So I, I'd say you're averaging probably about 20 to 22 health. Uh, Sabine Ezra's lower, but Sabine Ezra has freaking second chance. So, yeah. If you include a second chance, we're at uh, 23 health, and that's not counting the 8 million times they can use it. Oh my god, my nose is so itchy. Sorry. So, um, so that's why I, I, I put Maz lower. Um, I think it, it has very great stuff going for it. Maybe someone figures out some way to abuse it better. And then it'll be fine. So like Thrawn Unkar, there's essentially two versions. There's the, the mill version, and then there's the crazy support version. And I, I don't know if you guys seen it, but the crazy support version using Sonic Cannon with... Um, I don't recall the name of the card. I want to say it has a Stormtrooper on the front. It's the one that allows you to resolve a die um, and increase the damage equal to the number of resource costs on it or the resource costs on it. Um, you still obviously have to pay the resource costs, but what ends up happening is, is they, they go into your hand to remove your removal. They gain the resources to stick a Sonic Cannon. They then get the Sonic Cannon showing a 6 based off of all the focus that Thrawn and Unkar have. And then they could either um, A, Imperial War Machine, and if they don't have the additional resources. I, you don't see that that much in them, though, because they, they can get it. Uh, B, play that card to make it 9 damage, and then they pay 3. Um, 
and then C, sometimes they cast Salvo, and six damage AoE your board. So if you're playing three guys, that's like crazy. If you're playing two guys, like the six is gonna put a a, a hefty chunk of damage. That's half health for for most, or in, in some cases almost a kill. So uh, just getting to that stage, then that means that the, on the next hit they can they can do another six, um, and either kill your guy or kill one of your guys, and then go to the next round and get the last one. So there are. are some cute amazing things there and at least with that deck it's you need to still find things like the ATST and the Slave 1 and the Sonic Cannon and I'm not saying that that's anything tier 1 either but it, it looks better from a, a, a synergistic standpoint your opponent doesn't know that you're playing aggro like a damage deck or a control deck from the beginning so they're going to have a tough time figuring that out you're playing on weapons uh Alpha weapon, whatever the bloody hell it is. I'm gonna call it a uh, weapon stage alpha. I don't remember the name. Um, it's the one where you can play a vehicle for one less. People play that and just play like hounds tooths and stuff too, ATDPs. Um, but it, it has a, an interesting premise, uh, being one of the support decks that can actually protect itself via screwing the damage over. They have a lot of like key control elements. And then they can just, you know, throw some burst. I'm not saying the deck's anywhere near great. Um, I played against it a few times, but I think I was playing, like, Tier 3 stuff. Um, so it was it was vastly interesting, and I kind of just wanted to bring it to your attention so you could, like, see it for yourself, maybe try it out. Um, but it was, it was really just a bunch of control, stick, uh, fat, support. Um, I think they maybe... So it should have been, like, Slave 1 ATST, Sonic Cannon. There may have been ATDP. I think that only hits for like three, but they might have wanted it for additional like dice damage, and then it can still kill uh, running interference um, off of the special. I think it kills a support that's two or less, but it's an it's it's interesting enough where I figured I'd mention it. Um, Kylo FN, I it won Cloud City Open. Um, I had tried to do a video right before this one, but I got cut up by a phone call. Um, so Cloud City Open, uh, out of 30 people, I think it had, in the top eight, it was like seven Kylo FN and Cad Phasmas combined, and then one leftover, and I actually can't recall what that deck was. I don't remember if it was like a Mace deck, or I think it was Palpatine, but I, I would not bet any sort of, of cash on it or my well-being, so uh, take it with a grain of salt. But there are lots of Cad Phasma and lots of Kylo FN. So if we were only going by that, we'd clearly have to say, you know, oh my god, this is tier one. But um, it's really still unknown. I, I would say that the the consistency of what the deck's trying to do and the the, the viability makes them technically tier one. Um, is it like for me, tier one or tiers in general are a big thing about talking about like consistency with synergy. And that beep is my snapshot telling me I broke too fast. Um, so like how to explain this when I call a deck like tier one one and a half two it, it, it's kind of referring to like their overall game plan how the game plan comes out how like broken that game plan is um, and a lot of time the more you can break a game mechanic the more you know quote unquote broken it could be so like Rainbow Nines breaks game mechanics by having additional dice even after activated. Like, stuff comes out of nowhere. Um, Cad Phasma is a, uh, the equivalent to the old Jangle Veers, where you can... All right, Phasma out first. All right, I'm showing a little bit of damage. All right, sneak an ambush onto uh, Cad, roll out, do a bunch of damage without you having an action. Sabine Ezra, same thing. Sabine pulls an ambush from the, the discard pile, throws it on or overwrites one of her old ones, rolls out. I have the action, I resolve damage, or I can just go disrupt your resources or whatever I'm trying to do, and you can't get a chance to stop me. Because this game has no reaction, meaning you can't go, like what happens is they can't be like, all right, I attempt to cast this, I'll respond. You, this game doesn't do that. There's very few cards that have like trigger conditions in here where you can like restop or stop something, like a counter spell type stuff, which is perfectly fine. Like everything's preemptive. So that's why four solutions great good because you can 
throw it down before you take damage, knowing that that damn cat Phasma is going to freaking roll like a monster. And if he doesn't, you're like, big whoop. If he does, you have your protection. Um, uh, Rainbow Nine's already said, because all the extra dice, Kylo FN is another FN deck. Um, plus, you have Kylo and you have access to Vibro Knife. Uh, Vader Phasma has, you know, Vader, um, the untapped shenanigans to get reusage, Vibro Knife, uh, Four Strikes, it, and it's very solid from that standpoint. Um, Pomaz, you get to cheat throw like big things that you normally wouldn't be able to because you'd have to actually pay for them and roll them. He's a walking like ace in the hole type, type, and you're, you're bypassing game mechanic type stuff and you're able to uh, kind of just go broken or abuse things and that's perfectly fine. Um, trying to think else like what else is good. So like the, a, one of the reasons a lot of time you don't see like the the blue hero decks do well is because they're primarily based off of like shielding and staying alive and then getting smaller chunks of damage and the way stuff's going right now we can kind of bypass that. I think Qui-Gon Cannon is going to be a very good deck once someone has it narrowed down because uh, bypassing shields on Qui-Gon, A, is very hard, and B, if he has shields, that means he's still getting to use his ability, and then you have to concern yourself with a huge repost. Um, Qui-Gon Cannon, though, is mono blue, and anyone trying to mon run mono right now has a ginormous headache with Kylo FN. If the... If the nerfs that people keep saying we're getting actually come down and uh, slow down FN just enough. Um, we don't know if Kylo FN will still be a good deck or not. It probably will. Um, but you could also just switch to Kylo Phasma. And Kylo, Kylo inhibits the whole like mono thing. Like Palpatine, like Kylo just like, oh, I'm gonna, eat like Kylo just gets to eat you alive sometimes because unless you find the great cards and stack your hand with them like that that's a consistent two damage every round so let's assume you're getting to round three we're, we're talking four to six damage um outside of finding two two great cards and keeping them in your hand to reduce his percentages um so it, it's it's very tough there um so let's see let's talk about cad phasma a bit uh because apparently i was told i missed it on the last uh video so the thing, there's a couple things about Cat Phasma. Uh, one is the longer he stays alive, the scarier the game gets. Because the more upgrades he gets, the more likelihood that he's going to be able to, you know, finally roll that crazy damage roll that's of like four, five, seven, eight, you know, nine damage, and just like, oh look, your guy's dead. Because uh, if you nut on his roll, like that six damage, it costs you two resources, but like, who cares about that right now? If you hit a two and a three, it's five. Two and a two, that's four. He's he's a, he's a walking Vader that has a, a Django ability. Like he still has to pay for resources, which is his big issue. He has uh, resource struggles. But uh, Imperial HQ, which should be like 100% in his deck, um, is very helpful towards his struggle because you're going to get it over multiple rounds. So anyone who doesn't know, Imperial HQ is kind of like an, it binds all things. Uh, it's a one cost support that's red. And it says when you resolve a die that is a pay side, you can exhaust this to reduce that pay side by one. So um, most sides in this game who have pay sides are pay side one. We have a few that have, you know, two and three, but that's just Sonic Cannon. Um, and I think Houndstooth that I can think of. So, uh, for the most part, what ends up occurring is, is immediately you pay one, but there's very good odds your X8, your Holdout, your Cad Bane die are going to have a pay side. You then get to exhaust it to immediately get uh, the resource you paid back to go towards that. So it's kind of like, if you got to use it that first round you cast it, it was free, um, which is fine. But then each other round, it's like you're generating an additional resource by having that card in play. For Cad Phasma, who, or for the Cad Phasma deck, and Cad Bane has two pay sides on his dice, like each of them, because you have the two discard, which is very strong and very brutal, and I suggest resolving it sometimes when you can, like, don't just consider it as, as a, oh, crap, this sucked, like, discarding two from an opponent's hand is scary, like, 
when I'm playing against decks and they just hit like a vibro knife, I'm like, get out of my head. Like, this is my plan. I have plans. And sometimes they take the plan you wanted. Maybe maybe Sabine loses the damn smuggling instead of the weapon that they were going to pitch. Um, like, maybe you hit the boundless in FN or you just hit the weapons out. You, you can't do stuff with it. Uh, you get to strip the rerolls. Like, this, it, Imperial HQ is like the like the boundless for FN. It sets up it's more broken stuff. Actually it's not the boundless, that's a lie. I'm sorry. It's more like the enrage. Um it, it helps out where you needed it and where the ducks struggle the most, which is the ability to, to, to pay f for stuff. Um the other w real card that we're using, um if anyone remembers it, we had a really, really bad card from SOR called We Have Them Now. What that card said was is you needed the battlefield, you would pay two, and you would switch as many of your dice to damage dice as you wanted. Now, the thing was is paying two back then wasn't very good because the amount, the, the, the speed that you could do it at, people could just mess with your dice. And first you had to get like good dice out, then you had to have the battlefield, and like Django himself wasn't very amazing. You couldn't, you would want to like play upgrades and do stuff so where, where this changes very much is that Cad Phasma is a very fast deck. So they're likely to have the battlefield. And round two, they could have rolled all their dice out. Um, we have them now and do, you know, 8 to 12 damage. Um, if in general we're just we're just talking about, like, just fast um, Cad's dice, you have... Uh, you could hit, like, 6 or 8, and sometimes that's enough to just crush because randomly shutting down an opponent's FN before really gets to do stuff matters um, smashing a Sabine um, before she gets to like second chance down very huge uh, it's just that like it's a combo card and that combo card says I rolled out and I was able to nuke you um, the other one we have is uh, Heat of Battle now this one's a bit more dangerous. If, if your your opponent gets to switch their dice to damage first, then you get to switch yours. So in this situation, in a normal back and forth, if I roll out, then you roll out, and I ha do we have them now, you can just resolve your damage, meaning if your damage can kill my guy, I would, my guy would die and my dice go away. The difference is that if Cad's going first, and Cad goes, all right, trigger, switch a thing for an ambush, roll out my dice, we have them now, you don't have dice out yet. So he gets to flip all of his stuff to damage, and you don't most likely have a piece of removal that hits multiple pieces. Um, now this is where stuff like Sound the Alarm comes in, because we're kinda concerned with this whole like flip your dice meta. Uh, there's Concentrate from Hero, which they can pay one to flip a die, they can pay an additional flip a second die, which uh, a gentleman on Discord, Ledin, has been doing very well with. He gets to, you know, go fix his ranged or melee, whatever, for, like, vibro knives, and you tend to wait until after your opponent claims to pretty much go, ha ha pay two, fix my dice, smash you for a lot. Sometimes I'd kill your guy. The other person that gets to do it is, uh, Sabine Ezra, who is running around with Infamous, who, uh, which is the one where if you play, when you cast a yellow card, you can tap it to give it ambush so you get another action. And Never Tell Me the Odds. Never Tell Me Odds was a funny card that people were running with Han uh, last set around the end, where you would just try to get a bunch of dice, and then Infamous and Never Tell Me the Odds, flip your dice, and just burst somebody down with a boatload of damage. The dilemma is that that costs a lot of resources, and it was only for your yellow guy, and if you killed Han, that went down the toilet because you spent second. You were spending time doing trying to get second chance and stuff out. So, but the thing here now is that Sabine gets to flip an ambush onto her, roll out, have another action. You could infamous never tell them the odds, flip your damage, and then kill your opponent before they really got to do stuff. Uh, Cad Phasma doesn't really get it that way. They can do stuff like swiftness or tactical mastery. But those are much less useful um, over the course of a game. Whereas when you're playing Mono Yellow, Infamous can be like, oh, Infamous the Lothcat. Alright, 
you know, resolve whatever's left, or infamous, you know, then cast a shock, then claim. There's just different stuff there. Now, once again, I'm not saying sitting there, oh my god, this is the end all be all, but there's a lot of consistency there. Uh, Sabine Ezra, I played uh, pretty much all of yesterday. Um, I, uh, I'm gonna actually talk about quote unquote paywalls in a second, um, after this, because I was about to say, like, it, it's essentially behind a paywall, but it, it's not really. Um, I'll explain, so just give me a bit and we'll go through it, but, um, I put about six hours worth of video up from Sabine Ezra yesterday um, of me playing it and going through stuff. And, like, I'm, I'm kind of learning the deck as I go. So there is many more questionable plays at the beginning than there are near the end. But you can see a lot of, quote-unquote, broken things where I'm reusing Second Chance a bunch of times and it's not off of Starship Graveyard. Or if I do have Starship Graveyard, then it's, you know, it tends to be much scarier. Um, but anyways, there's, there's misplays galore all over there, um, at the beginning, and you see the play get tighter, and you start to see me make, like, the adjustments to the deck, as I'm learning what feels really good and what doesn't feel good, yada, yada, yada. Um, but Sabine Ezra seems like a very good deck. Uh, it has some great things going for it, but it also has some major downfalls. When you're playing against a very aggressive deck, if you can't find the second chance, you are in a world of hurt. Because she does not have a ton of health, it's just 11. And the way I'm running it right now is not with a ton of removal. So I'm kind of racing damage. And the hope is, is to uh, burst the guy down to reduce dice, then land the second chance, and have, um, have like you try to struggle to kill through it, and then chip away, and then kill your guy. Uh, later... In, I, I focus more on the infamous never tell me the odd stuff, but at the beginning I just want no part of it because I can't afford it. Um, later I change my mind and I just actually start like bursting people. I'll get like one upgrade then just go for like nine because that, that's good enough for the plan. Um, that's obviously when I remember to actually pay for my damn weapon that I pulled out from the discard pile because I got, it was probably like twice where I messed that up. Uh, so very quickly I want to talk about this whole like paywall shenanigans and uh, how people do stuff and uh, no I'm not selling my Patreon here right now um, I do try to put those I try to stay somewhere near the end for like a minute max um, I used to listen to podcasts and I, I understand very much why they're doing it um, wasn't a huge fan but I, I understand and this it's not for everybody so the first thing I want to talk about is the term paywall so people are telling me that I'm putting my decks behind paywalls and that it's not like right and it's like I, I'm not sure if you're aware of this but I own businesses and I think when you go to a breakfast shop you don't tell them that it's not right that you're paying like two fifty for an egg like think when you sit down at a, at a food place you go because of convenience you don't want to buy the eggs from the grocery store then go home and then cook them how you like them and throw on cheese or whatever for whomever you're going to eat with, whether it be yourself or for others. So you pay the additional money for someone else to do it. This is essentially the same thing. And what are the, I'm not trying to sit there and like any sort of like brag or whatever. I feel that I'm very good at cards. I offer a service. If people would like to see me play with whatever bunch of decks and get my deck lists that I'm personally playing with and stuff like that, it's essentially costing them money. You can call it a paywall, but then you need to think that every single place you go to for any sort of service, watching movies, getting food, whatever, is a paywall. Because it is. We offer a service, it costs money. That's just how it goes. Think of you play golf, you play basketball, tennis, whatever. If you're if you're actively doing it, you enjoy it quite a bit, and you want to be better, you pay someone to train you. That's just how it goes. It saves you a bunch of time. You don't have to go through 20 years to catch up to their amount of experience. You kind of get a shortcut. It happens, that is it, let's move on. I'm not gonna talk about it anymore today, hopefully, unless I rant about it. But I just wanted to go over it a bit because I, I hear that term quite a bit. People are talking about 
oh, blah, 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 we give, you know, free content, da, 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 why is this behind a paywall? I hate the theory behind it, and it's like, this is why, like, it, I, I cannot remember who said it, but someone stated before, in, in, in some quote, maybe famous, maybe not, if you do something well, you probably shouldn't do it for free. Like, you'll do stuff for free for your friend, but, like, if you're a plumber, you're charging people when you go to, to, to fix their drain, unclog their pipes, plunge their toilet. It's just how it is. Um, but it, it's a very good concept. I, I, I understand it, and the fact that I own a business kind of makes it easier for me to, like, know, like, sure, I don't pay people to teach me fantasy football. If I did, maybe I'd win more. But um, that's neither here nor there. It boils down to if it's something you want to do, you want to be able to, you know, help out with the shortcut or you like the community or whatever, you go and you pay for it. We're not asking for a ton. Um, it just, it, it helps. And that's all it really is. Uh, hold on, this is Popo. Got this blinking blue and white. Popo. Don't worry, they're not pulling me over, guys. Not today. So, I shifted back over. I'm not riding this guy. This is actually my exit. There's a left exit over here. Um, so, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Enough about paywall stuff. You don't have to hear me do shenanigans. Like, I, I addressed it not because I wanted to complain about it, but more because I wanted to get people to really understand what they're saying. Um, but, yeah. So, I'm going to try to leave that as a, a, a dead horse, and I won't beat it. So, back to what we were talking about. Uh, the grand aspect of decks. Let me think. Alright, so we talked about Mazhar, we went through Cat Phasma, we talked a little bit about Sabine Ezra. Oh, so this so like a little bit more about Sabine Ezra. Sabine Ezra has some really good synergy things going and I I wouldn't say I enjoy playing the deck because I I don't actually care sometimes. Like I will play a deck for like a day or two. Um, do videos and then like go to the next deck. Um, or try to build something new. It's early on in the format, so I, I thoroughly enjoy experimenting. Um, Sabine, unfortunately, it's not have a cheap enough bake-offs to experiment with 8 million different types of decks. Uh, the 15, maybe, but I'll get into one die Sabine probably much later. I did it with the um, Poe number 2 for a bit, um, but I kind of just, I, I go to the next deck quite a bit. I want to get, like, the different experiences, and then I'll come back and work on it further. Um, FN, I did the same thing, except the thing was is that, like, when I played FN in SOR, I played FN himself in, like, 8 million different decks because he was cheap enough to, to run. Okay, Anakin FN, FN this, that. Ankar FN, blah, blah, blah. Like, I, I ran it as Ankar FN Night Sister. I was one of those three character three die guys for a bit. It was, uh, it was a very interesting, fun combo deck. Um, but, so, like, I... I, I I, I pretty much go back and forth all the time uh, with decks because you, you want to learn what's going on, uh, especially since now we have enough cards where you can you can you can more easily not know what are the like 15, 20, 25 core cards for a deck. It's a lot of experimentation and uh, trying to find like a good lineup and synergistic cards um, or just a bunch of good cards, and then some synergistic cards to tie all that together. So, um, sorry about that noise. There's some uh, uh, construction going on on this uh, bridge that I'm on. So, let's see. What else is synergistic? Um, Anakin Phasma, you guys have probably seen for the most part. Uh, there's a bunch of different ways to run it with uh, holocrons or weapons and upgrades. I think people trying to go, like, Vibro Knife Melee is probably a mistake. Uh, only because you only have the, the, the two Anakin sides, the two and the three for a resource. And to resolve that three, you need to pay one additional. So, like, maybe you spend the first turn, like, isoing or, like, just controlling a little bit. And then you Vibro, and, like, that's fine in theory. But if you're, if one of Anakin's dice gets manipulated, or, because if you hit the special, you're resolving it. Um... In theory, you're resolving the two or the three for a resource also. But uh, th those three sides are more likely to get hit. Meaning if you run the special, you're not going to do stuff with it. If you claim, you also might end up doing the Anakin special. 
Um, I'm more inclined to run stuff like DH Blaster or Hold Out there because you have six total sides between the four dice that are ranged, whereas Anakin's only has the four. Um, plus, if you put a DH on Phasma or Hold Out or something, uh, she's likely to be the one that's not targeted, or if you want them to get them to switch targets, etc., etc. But I, I'm more inclined towards the, the range version, um, or Holocron plus ranged, because I think it just, it has a bit more synergistic tendencies, and DH only costs one, which will still let you pay for pay sides on Anakin or play removal, whereas the, the melees, you know, Ancient Sabres and all of those all cost two and three. Um, Z6 is probably the only three I'd run in there. Um, I don't think I'd run a regular lightsaber. You're not going to run like Kylo lightsaber. So it, it pretty much sticks to two and then maybe Z6. Um, Jesus Christ, I gotta call it. I gotta stop this. I'll tie this together.